And joining us to talk about this, and including the curious case of the Strathtyre. See, you've never even heard it before. Not have I. And apparently it's in my electorate. Um, the Strathtyre is former Act MP, city councillor, regional councillor, and political commentator, Hilary Calvert. And she joins us this afternoon. Hilary, how are you? Good afternoon, Michael. Can you believe that? That there are a thousand people who are trying to organise a protest to do with the Lauren Dickinson sentencing? Well, we used to have, didn't we? Um, and they talked about people in France with their knitting while people got... Guillotined. Killed, whatever, guillotined. Yep. Um, we used to have systems where people just got together in a town square and lynched people and things. Um, and I guess we could... Well, now this is... No, but this is the protest that she was going to be sentenced, yes. apparently. And I'm saying if these people don't want to do the normal thing that we've developed as a legal system, then they could go back to that, just getting a group of outraged people to have a view. The downside of that in this sort of case would be that they are more likely to be on the other side. They're more likely to say, you know, hang, hang the woman, not let her off. So the fact that there's a few people who want to override our normal court system for something alternative. They might want to think about that. The amazing thing, though, to Hillary, from this, this group of a 1,000 who are saying, you know, basically free Lauren Dickinson, is that they obviously are now... Uh, and, and, and one of them is a mental health nurse, and I've got to say, crazier people I've never met than mental health nurses, and believe me, I've met a few. Uh, it's all right, not as a patient, but... Uh, there is, I, I cannot tell the difference of, often between mental health nurses and the patients that they're meant to be responsible for, certainly in social settings. Um, but is that this, the, the evidence of the psychiatrist that was put in front of the jury and that was overwhelming in one sense, in one direction, you can put that aside because these thousand people know better. Well, we had, we used to have... I don't know whether you've got any recollection of it about murder cases in Dunedin, but we used to have a psychiatrist, Basil James, in Dunedin, and he kept on being wheeled out by the defence in such cases because his basic position was that he was an expert and a woman who murdered people, her children or whatever, was in principle mad, not bad because no sane person would do that and therefore she needed sympathy not um, not to be incarcerated or not to be found responsible. And that's what's behind some of this attitude, I think. That, that you couldn't, a woman couldn't murder her own children. She must have lost her mind. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the theory and thought here that um, she's clear. I mean, so any female who murders any child at any time it's not evil. They're not out of control. They haven't performed an evil act. They're just yeah. clearly there's something adult about them, yeah? But we do have some rules about that, and that's why she tried infanticide or something else, whatever it was. Um, but we do have rules about what you need to prove rather than just saying, well, you know, killing your children is a an impossible thing for a sane person to do. Mm. They haven't met some children, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair enough too. All right, uh, we, jo we joke about it, but it's really no joking matter. Um, anyhow, no. moving it, on. There's no good in it, I mean. No, there is no good in this. You're absolutely right. It, it's not, it's a very sad, very tragic situation. No, well, um, it's sad and tragic, but it's also evil. And at the end of the day, it's, it's an act of appalling evil that was visited upon those three children. Well, it was somebody who could not look at the world from their position, which is why we don't harm our children, because we think of the world partly from their perspective. She looked from her perspective. She didn't yes. want her, yes. Uh, um, yes. her, some other woman looking after her children. I know. She, whatever. Yes. I know. Had she killed herself with them, you know, some women drive off a bridge with their children in the car. And you can think, well, they're nuts enough to think the world you know, they have to go and the kids will come with them, sort of. But she didn't manage to kill herself. 
No, she didn't make a bog all job of it. You're absolutely right. In fact, I don't... I don't think she tried, really. Well, Did actually, they, they said, oh, suicide attempt. And I was going, what suicide attempt was that? Because, yeah. um, you know, would she take an overdose of pills? No. Did she actually stab herself in the abdomen or something? No. Did she no. hang herself in the garage? No. I mean... Yeah. Mm. There was no suggestion of any... And she was quite... She had quite the wherewithal and ability to... Um, kill herself if she wanted to. But I mean, those thousand women, I, you know, for God's sake, don't let those thousand women have children who are supporting Lauren Dickerson. That's all I have to say on the support group. Yeah. Because if they believe that the killing of child yeah. when you've got postpartum yeah. or depression is acceptable and is an exoneration, you know, they shouldn't have children. Do not breed no, with I these think people. There, I think there are cases, which is what the law it's provided for of infanticide where women just go completely bonkers. And yes, this, there are. This and has no none of the none of the hallmarks of that. No, and that that it was very interesting, um, Hillary, prior to the case. Um, it was during the case in actual fact, but prior to the jury retiring, we had um, Marie Dyberg, you know, the um, KC, yeah. um, a very good lawyer uh, from Auckland. Um, and she was making that point that usually in insanity cases, in fact, there's just been one, for example, in Hawke's Bay just recently, the opposition, sorry, the prosecution and the defence agree that that person was insane. Yeah. Uh, and they're still found guilty and they go through the courts, but it's accepted that... that Not guilty on the grounds of insanity. Exactly. And they're committed to some uh, sort of whatever. institution. Yeah. As I said, that's just happened in a case in Hawke's Bay recently. Um, yeah. where a mental health patient killed a 70-year-old man. Um, but in this particular case, she was saying, you know, it's it's a high bar, but the prosecution were clear from day one. She was, she, there, there was, and so were the police. There was no doubt about it. She was not crazy enough to, to fit that bar at all. Um, the, the bar is that you know the nature and quality of your Correct, act that's right. And know that it's wrong. Correct. And it was no suggestion that those two things weren't true. Spot on, yep. Um, now, talking about that and going to a much more prosaic... Well, two things, obviously, in a local government area in your neck of the woods that um, have made national news. The first one, can I go... The chief executive of the Gore District Council, Steve Parry, has resigned. We actually invited him on the show yes. today. I uh, had a very nice reply to him saying that he isn't doing any media but wished us well, which is kind of him. Uh, after a pretty public contretemps with the new young mayor, Ben Bell, um, in Gore. Um, was that a logical outcome, do you think, to the, the conclusion? I wondered why it took so long. I presume it was people having discussions and financial things going backwards and forwards and things. Um, who would know? Um, but the two of them, when, as you know yes, absolutely yourself, the chief executive is the only person you employ as a council. The rest of them are employed by the chief executive, your staff. And if there's a um, stoush between the chief executive and their employer, then their employer wins because the employer wins. Mm. Yes. So... The suggestion, again, with a lynch party, as it were, <laughs> people saying off with his head and telling Ben to, the rest of council, or some of the rest of council, telling Ben to resign, and then the people coming back and saying, we chose him, you know, tell the other guy. Um, well, the thing, the, the thing that strikes me as remarkable about that is that this would appear to be... Now, he, he was, would have been elected... I was just working it out 11 months ago, rough, almost 11 months ago, in October of last year, um, by eight votes, and they went through a whole series of rigmarole to, to go and work out that he'd actually won by such a small and slim margin. The chief executive, Steve Parry, had been reappointed to his role prior to the election, um, which, obviously, there were... Not questions. the smartest thing to do. No, I, I mean, thought. the political timing of that was well off. But anyhow, putting it to one side, 11 months, and Ben Bell was then, as you say, he was um, the majority, the vast majority of his council were ready to call for his head publicly uh, when that story broke. I don't think you could possibly have foreseen when that story first broke 
that he would not only have faced him down, this 23-year-old, but that he would have forced the resignation of his chief executive of 22 years standing. Um, that's quite a turnaround from where we were, what, six months ago? Yes, well, perhaps some other people said on the way along, um, the chief executive is employed by you guys, what's going on here? Ben isn't, Ben the mayor is not employed by the chief executive. And clearly the people who, why Ben got in at some level was that by the barest of majorities, people thought that it was time for a change from the previous little cosy Tracy and the um, chief executive arrangement. Yes. So they were wanting something different. Yes. Only just. Yes. Marginally, but they were wanting something different. And the something different, because of the length of time for chief executive, was probably a combination of chief executive and mayor. Yes. Actually. Yes, I'm sure you're right. And uh, the remarkable thing, though, is they chose a 23-year-old without any political or really life experience at all to do that role. Now, I, I'm not being critical of Ben, ben Bell, but Gore said we're so one to change, we're even going to choose this 23-year-old with no life experience. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's how much they wanted change. Um, take you to the next issue. There's a story that's been brewing in Dunedin for weeks now, but it's only just made national news. I see it made front page of the New Zealand Herald website about um, yesterday. And that is the story of the Strathtyree chairman and the wrong meal at a restaurant in Outram. Um, yes. Can you take us through that one, please? Well, <coughs> it's another store in the wind of where we're sort of heading, I think, in society. So here we have somebody who orders a meal, is not satisfied with it for good or bad reason, we don't know, and who looks like they've said something to the person who brought it to them or a staff member, and we don't know what they said. I don't. It was a racist slur. You know what? I know what said. was said. Yeah. They called her a black bitch. Ah, okay. Not ideal, you no. would say. Uh, so so he, was, he, was up, now, he was upset. Uh, he got the wrong order. There was a mix-up with the food he'd ordered at a hotel, and he said... Something along the lines, oh, you silly black bitch, you've got it wrong. Now, I don't know the context in which he said that. Like, there's many contexts you can say that. One, you could say that as in, you silly black bitch. Or the other context is, yeah. oh, you silly black bitch. And, you know, sort of like, he's trying to make yeah. a joke of it um, and yeah. failing badly. So it's an act of, so I'm not sure if he meant it in a malicious or in a jocular manner, but those yeah. were the words as right. it's been reported to me, that have been and, claimed. Right, and then the, um, nothing was said at the time, and it usually isn't in those sorts of No, it was overheard, situations. so and his remarks later, were overheard by other patrons by in the dining who, room. Yeah. Who then complained to the DCC, the Dunedin City Council. 